Oh hi, I'm the heretic. Now Romans 13 isn't some iconic story or great riveting tale intended to contextualize abstract morals and lessons, yet it's arguably one of the most historically significant Bible passages you've never heard of. So St. Paul is writing to the Jewish Catholics in Rome on matters of faith. Now what makes this whole part of the letter interesting is that it seems to affirm the divine right of kings, that all civil and governmental authority is appointed by God, and that obedience to the government is righteousness. Surely I'm exaggerating. Well, let's read the passage and see what you think. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Wilt thou then be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt receive praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore ye that needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience' sake. For this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no evil against his neighbor, Therefore love is the fulfilling of the law, and that, knowing the time, that now it is the high time to awake out of the sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly, as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh, to fulfill the lusts thereof. I'll do my best to not get political this episode. It's not my intent to explore the Bible from a political lens. Now it's easy to imagine how controversial this passage can be. Let's address the elephant in the room first. The powers that be are ordained by God. While that might not necessarily imply government, the reference to rulers implies some form of archy. Therefore, Resistance to the ruler is resistance to God. You can imagine this being used to justify the power of governing systems, whether benevolent or tyrannical. Don't say it, you promised not to get political. Now this is one of St. Paul's epistles, or the letters it is believed he wrote to early Christian communities. In this case, it's a letter to the Roman Christians, which only makes things more interesting. Are all political authorities ordained by God? Even the ones who persecute Christians? Is the duke who kills the king to usurp the throne a just ruler? Is Paul seriously telling Romans that the emperor is God's servant? And if God has ordained these rulers, does that mean he is responsible for their actions? Obviously, you can see there's a few problems here. It's ambiguous as to whether Paul is speaking of earthly or spiritual authorities, but we can assume the former. We can assume this because the rulers are a revenger who wields a sword and to whom tribute is due. But Paul isn't speaking that submission is due, but voluntary submission. Now what does this mean? It's the turn the other cheek principle. In Matthew 5.39, But I say unto you, that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy cheek, turn to him the other also. When evil tries to control you, they don't convince you to do it. They impose their will upon you by force, to have you act as you otherwise wouldn't. The immediate reaction may be to meet force with force, to defend yourself, and although that is justified, to meet hate with love is to make a statement that I am free, that I make my own choices, and that you have no power over me. I turn the other cheek, not because you want me to, but because I choose to. Defiance through 
love. Paul most certainly calls for love. In Romans 12, 14-21, it's pretty clear. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. We of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Things are becoming more clear. This passage comes right before Romans 13, so the two are clearly meant to be connected. He reaffirms this as love thy neighbor, in addition to restating some of the Ten Commandments. Now what does any of this have to do with the governing authorities? Paul is not advocating that submission to government is submission to God. What he's calling for is voluntary cooperation. Submit to Roman law. Pay your taxes. Now are these things justified or legitimate? No, don't, don't get political. Anyways, there is no power but God, and the powers that be are ordained by God. Do these things not because the Romans will punish you if you don't, but because you choose to. Are the Romans ordained by God? Of course not. They're a construct of man's free will. Show the Romans who hate you the love of Christ, for they are your neighbors. But also, because it's pragmatic, the Roman Catholics were under persecution by the pagan authorities, and further strife and anti-Roman sentiment would have just caused further trouble and justified even greater oppression on the Christians on the part of Rome. To Paul, meeting violence with violence begets violence, which benefits nobody. So in a nutshell, what Paul means when he speaks of rulers is for people to voluntarily submit to authority of their own free will even if only to avoid conflict or, in Paul's case, an ethnic divide in the empire used as a pretense for more tyranny. True submission was owed only to God. You must love your enemy, even your oppressors. If you act in love towards your fellow man, then all will be well. The Lord has promised. Vengeance is his. And let's be honest, when men try to take vengeance into their own hands, they usually screw it up. So what does this mean? It's a bitter pill to swallow, to be called upon to want to submit to our modern governments. I'm sure the Roman Christians thought the same thing, but we want to avoid conflict. Seek not to add to the problems of the fourth turning of today. Love your fellow man. As tempting as it is to fight back, you help nobody by furthering conflict and your strongest affirmation of freedom, of the free will that God lovingly bestowed upon you, is to submit. Not because you have to, but because you choose to. Don't worry, you win in the end. Christianity conquered the Roman Empire before the Germanic barbarians. The state is not ordained by God. It is merely earthly authority, and it is written, We owe no man nothing but our love. We ought to obey God rather than men. Acts 5.29 But when left with no choice, your loyalty is to God. Honor who deserves honor. Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and nothing else. Questions, comments, critique? What do you think? What is owed to Caesar? Like, share, and subscribe to Taxation is Theft! No War with Iran! Ah, oh, damn it.